Hello and welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Program. Uh, we are going to continue our Mun Misadventures. And in this episode, I'm actually going to send up the radio tower that I've been talking about. It's this tiny little thing here. And I decided to get fancy and also send up a science laboratory. <laughs> Essentially knock out two birds with one stone. Uh, that's the objective. Also, I did accept a contract uh, to test the LV... 1R liquid fuel engine on the mud. So we're going to knock that out also, and hopefully we can get there safe and sound with no hiccups. But that remains to be seen. Um, also, I, this is a much heavier spacecraft, as you can obviously tell. It's got a lot of parts to it, a lot of things can go, go wrong. Uh, my fuel, my thing's leaning a little bit. What the heck is going on? I don't know why. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. I don't know why that's doing that. Uh, I think I caught it early enough. Um. Why are these uneven? Of course, you know, I'm s sitting here on the sofa, so these numbers are incredibly small for me. I can't really read what's going on here. That looks pretty close. Okay, I don't know what's going on there, but apparently fuel lines don't want to play nice. Um, anyway, so I'm going to actually, since this is a heavier rocket, I'm actually going to go to 20,000 meters and then start turning towards my 90 degree vector. Uh, that way I can get as much height as possible. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> It's kind of the game plan right now, so don't judge me if I'm doing things a little bit differently than normal. Or judge if you want. Either way, it's fine. It doesn't bother me. Okay, now that we're pretty close to our 20,000 meter point, I'm going to start turning this beast over. Hopefully nothing breaks. Alright. Once we get in space, I'll uh, do a little close-up shot, I suppose, of the uh, radio tower so you can see it a little bit better. That. Oh, that was close. I thought it was gonna clip me. All right, so radio tower, simple thing. It's cool to me at least. I uh, need to disable these. <laughs> that will hopefully keep me from torquing inadvertently in the wrong directions. Let's just go and lock steering as well. Just in case. Okay, looks good. Um, we will. Or I guess I'll see you uh, as we are getting ready to go to the Mun, which is right there. So, uh, yeah. Okay, guys, so so far everything is looking good. Uh, no hiccups yet. Uh, just right over orbit of, or actually creating our orbit over Kerbin right now. Pretty happy with this uh, design. I spent a lot of time building this rocket and just thinking of everything I possibly could in advance. Um, so it should be pretty robust. Oh, this looks sweet. This this right here looks awesome on itself. Now maybe if we got rid of the tires, it would look like some really awesome. Uh, satellite or something that would be in orbit but that is really cool looking to me I think that's awesome alright we're just going to get this about 120 or 130 that looks good alright where's the moon at or the mon looks like we're going to have to wait uh, I could probably, let's see here, I could probably actually make it, but I don't know if I want to do it. Depends on the orbit I get. Yeah, that's not going to work. If I wait till we go later. Hold on a second, let's start over. Alright, so let's see. Wait a little bit later, fly out there. Um, oops, it's a hell of a miss. So let's turn it closer. Let's slow it down. Uh, hmm. 
Ah, it's too late. Well, I guess we'll just wait to go around. We could use some waiting time anyway because we still have to get um, in line with Duna, which is still incredibly far behind. I feel like we've already done several missions and I've time warped um, to get around <laughs> or to wait for Duna to catch up to us, but whatever. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this thing. It's pretty sweet looking. Almost out of fuel already, jeez. Um, this should be enough to get me to land, I hope. And maybe into orbit around the moon? Maybe? We will find out. Alright, we're gonna zip through this. And I'll see you guys soon. Okay guys, so I sort of have a dilemma. I'm on the verge of running out of electricity. Uh, while also trying to create my periapsis. So I'm just trying to sputter a little bit to generate some electricity to keep myself alive or to keep my batteries up, but every time I do that I kind of mess up with the uh, orbital trajectory and stuff. So all my lights are off, um, <laughs> so I gotta make it two hours, I, I, I think I'll be in the sunlight here shortly so I might just have to let it die and recharge. I hope, I hope that I can um, recover from this. So I guess I'm just gonna let this beast die. Actually, I'm gonna, you know what I need to do first? I should point myself in the direction of the sun. So, oh wait, okay, so I, I already am facing that way, sort of. Oh. There we go. Okay. Alright, let's hope that works. <laughs> and she's dead. Well, I didn't think that one through, so this could be uh, potentially fatal. Oh, there we go. We're back on. Alright. No worries then. Okay, as you guys know, I do not like landing on the dark side of the moon so we are gonna wait till we make a couple orbits around it before we try and make any attempt um, to land so I'm just gonna go ahead and set up my orbit try and make it nice and pretty and then uh, we'll go in for a landing later okay so while I'm spinning around the bun incredibly fast I'm always just gonna take a look at this I feel like Duna's just never I feel like it's going backwards. Like it seems to always be just a little bit more behind us every time we go to look to make sure it's actually still there. Well, too close. Okay, round and round we go. When we stop, nobody knows. Okay, so we are coming in hot. Very hot, actually. Now that I'm looking. Too hot. Too hot for comfort, that is. Oh, wait, maybe not, actually. We're gonna need to readjust. How are we looking on fuel? Hmm. I think we can do it. I'm gonna go ahead and extend my landing gear. There should be enough fuel to help us land. We're not going incredibly fast. Oh, it's gonna be a long drive. I don't know, maybe I should risk it, maybe I shouldn't. We're, I'm gonna try and get us as close as possible without risking too much hope. Maybe we should land and then just kinda hop over there. Alright guys, moment of truth right here. Okay, here we go. Coming in, speed's looking good. i try and get it under uh, 50 meters per second here in about hopefully less than a kilometer. It's pretty close, it's about as close as I'm 
think I can get. Alright, landing gears are extended. And one thing I did actually while I was building the thing is I told the landing gear to stay, um, uh, to, or lock the suspension so that way I didn't damage the wheels uh, because this thing weighs so much. Um, so we're going to be about just under a kilometer away from the other craft, which isn't too bad. I'm willing to make that drive. But, gotta watch my uh, speed here. Changes the surface before I crash again. Don't want that to happen. think anything more than four meters per second is probably too dangerous or I'm sorry six meters per second for landing look at that beautiful all right let's uh oh yeah before I do anything we're gonna complete this contract first so I'm on the mun I'm landed and I need to test the LV all, uh, LV-1R rockets. So, gonna do this. Actually, I'm gonna do this. And I'm gonna turn these off to mitigate any potential uh, accidents. And I'm going to say go. Uh, Okay, that didn't happen like planned. Uh, I'm scared. <laughs> Let's try this again. Put it here and here and go. There we go. Okay. Whew. That could have been pretty bad. Alright, mission accomplished. Now. 700 meters. Okay, so I am going to... What am I going to do? I guess I'm just going to go ahead and break these things off. And then I'll come pick it up in the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.